Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel M Stuart Paintings. I'm Murray and on today's acrylic painting tutorial I'm going to teach you how to create depths and realism in your work to create this lovely flower filled landscape painting. So let's get into it. So the colours you're going to need for today's tutorial are yellow, purple, blue, black, green, brown and white. And you also need a hairdryer to dry your work at stages of this video. This painting just coming up here is the reference photo. If any of you would like to pause the video and create a outline for your work. Or here is my canvas. Obviously the tree isn't been drawn in but it's just a chalk outline if anyone would like to pause the video before we start. So that being said we're going to use some light blue for the base of the horizon and all I'm doing is putting some blue and lots and lots of white to create a very light blue tone. Now you can use things like cobalt blue or a little bit of carillion blue and as you get to the top you just add more blue. And what we do is, if you see the two tones there, we just create a bridge tone in the middle and we just blend those two together. Now, if you dry your work with a hairdryer, you can always add a second layer like I always recommend, just so you get the nice richness of the blues and it covers up any of that burnt sienna canvas below it. Or if you have a white canvas, you just make sure that you've got a lovely blended piece of work by using a large brush and just by drying it and adding a set second coat. The thing with acrylics, they dry quite um, watery and it just makes your sky look very pretty. Now I'm just gonna add a little white to that light blue mix. I don't want just pure white, so I want some blue still in that mix. And I'm just gonna create with my big brush the illusion of clouds on that horizon. So all I'm doing is a little bit of blue and tons of white but I don't want it pure white we'll use pure white to use the highlights so we don't want it to be too overbearing and because our background sky is nice and dry if we make a mistake we could just rub it off we could just use a baby wipe and we wouldn't have to start again and all I'm doing is just taking a little bit more white and just creating the outline the highlights on these clouds just to make certain bits more prominent and make certain bits look more realistic but by using a lighter blue what it does it gives the illusion that these clouds are far away we want to create the depths in our work this video is all about perspective and depths because a lot of you have been asking how you do that so by using tones and learning about the tones that's what i'm going to teach you so don't use pure white unless it's just a highlight so try to have a little bit of blue in your clouds and it just makes them look further back and more wispy and more realistic so when you're happy with your clouds, please dry your work. And then what you can do is just use a piece of chalk and to draw back in the outline that we had already. So all I'm using now, I'm just using some green, a little bit of white and some blue. And the reason I'm using a little bit of white and some blue is this, um, I'm just blocking in where I want things, but that far green background, if you imagine a field very, very far away, the closer you get to the sky, the further back something is, the more saturated the color gets towards the color of the sky. So if you can see the far off field, it's a little bit more blue, because obviously it's nearer to the sky, whereas this field here in the foreground is a lot more green. So all I'm doing, I'm just blocking in where I want things to be. But what the tones do is they create the illusion of th something far away or something close to you. So this is what I keep trying to teach you guys. It's all in the tones. So by adding blue to your green, you can just create the idea of something far away. So these fields are gonna have little trees on top of them. So all I've done is mix some green and some blue together and a tiny bit of white and I'm just creating the illusion of different hedges and different bushes in a field. Now, if you can see now, we're just gonna block in some hedges to create a divider between these fields. And because the tone is a greeny blue, what it's doing is it's making it look like it's further back. So see, by adding blue to your mix, 
it creates the illusion of something further or closer towards you. So same with here, we're just going to add some blue and we're just going to create a shadow. So our tree is going to be here and in the shade, obviously it creates a cooler. So we're just going to create the illusion of shadows using blues and purples. So anything like blue and purple, if you add the two colors together, they create great shadow tones. And anything like heat, things like orange and yellow create very warm tones. So if something's in the sunlight and something's in the dark, you can either warm it up or cool it down. So by just using just a very light white, green and blue, I'm just creating the illusion of trees and hedges in that far off field. Now all I'm doing is just taking some green and I'm leaving some of the underpainting to shine through because in a minute we're going to put the real darks on, we're going to put some really heavy darks on. And all it is, we're just trying to create texture, the illusion of texture in our bushes. So even though they're far away, as I keep saying to you, your eyes are fantastic. It's just to create the illusion of all this different detail that will trick your eyes once we get to things in the foreground, like the tree and the path. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna create little bumps and little things that your eyes can focus on just so it looks more realistic. As I keep saying to you, the more things you have in the background, and the more things you have in the foreground, it's just layers to your foundation to make your work look more realistic. So I've just mixed up some black, some brown, some purple, some blue, and some green. So you can see there's five colors there, just to create a very dark tone. And these are all the parts of your trees, the texture that aren't getting any sunlight. So think of underneath a tree, it's very dark where it's not getting any light. Now, unfortunately, my camera, was playing up a bit when I was doing this video and it didn't record the next step so what I've done is I've just taken a still before it jumps and if you'd like to pause the video and just catch up I've just added some lighter green and some yellow underneath that hedge line and that's all I've done so if you want to pause the video you can just catch up if there's a little bit of a jump there sorry about that my camera decided to run out of batteries it's been it's been a bit funny lately now all i've done is um just added some blue some green and some brown to create a dark shadow tone and that's going to be in our corners here because this area is going to be nearest to the viewer so i'm just creating the illusion of darks nearest to us and by again darkening up the corners what we're doing is we're drawing the viewer's eyes to our path and I'm just using that same tone to just go underneath our hedge and just bring to make it look more prominent so there's a clear divide between that field and that hedge. So when you've got a clear divide from your field and your hedges, just use the same tone. Or oh, is this a bit of blue, some brown? And a tiny bit of green and that's the very darks of our shadows as i say i don't really use black apart from to add to another color because black is overwhelming so try to get in the habit of using blue and brown to create your darkest tones now what i'm going to do here is we're going to create the illusion of these wild flowers this is a beautiful wild flower field so we're going to take some yellow and green and we're just going to block in using a flat brush the far wild flower field that's in the background and all I'm doing I'm just turning this flat brush sideways and I'm just creating the, the illusion of flower tops and because we've lovely shadow tone now underneath it just gives the illusion of all their stalks and all their all the difference and all the different bits and bobs now I'm gonna take some light uh, green so I'm gonna take some green some white and a tiny bit of blue and I'm just going to do the same sort of I'm going to leave a bit of the underpainting it's just going to give the highlights of grass sort of long grass by leaving a bit of that underpainting it's just making it look like there is some so again look by just using putting the shadow tone on first and then putting the highlights on top you're creating this illusion between lights and darks you can add depth to your work, but it's the shadow tone that's underneath. They both go together. Think of yin and yang. You need one and the other. What it's doing is the shadow tone underneath is shining through. So by leaving gaps, just like we did with the waves in our dolphin painting, or if we've, you've ever done one of my seascape tutorials, 
by putting the darks on first and then putting the highlights on the top is creating this 3D effect. It's a really easy way to do acrylics, okay? So I'm just taking a little bit more brighter green and I'm just going around that hedge. And as I keep saying to you, you just gotta keep working on it. You'll find your way. So it's really, really good rule of thumb is the further things get further back, the more blue they get. And the closer things get towards you, the more darker they get. So if you think things further back, add some more blue and things in the real close to you, add some more black, tiny bit of black to your colors or a bit more blue and brown, so a really dark tone. Now all I'm doing here, I'm gonna block in the path of taking some burnt umber, which is some brown and lots and lots of white. So we've got this lovely sort of, sort of sandy color tone, this sort of um, khaki sort of tone and we're just blocking in our path and again this is going to be the shadow tone and then we're going to put the highlights on top so we're going to first put a darker tone remember acrylics always the dry darker than what you think and then we're just going to put a lighter tone on it so all we're going to do is add a little bit more white to that mix and just leave again little indicators of that that darker brown underneath and that will look like things like pebbles and um, rough patches in your path so by not covering it entirely but by leaving bits to shine through we can do that and you can add a little bit more white and a tinge of yellow and that can even be the highlights on that path so if you've got bits of the path that you want to make look a bit more brighter where the sun is shining it's great and what that does it clearly has a divide now between the shadow and your path so you can clearly see which bits are hitting the light and which bits aren't so by just leaving areas of the path underneath it's creating the illusion of texture it's all the boulders and all the boulders all the little debris the things like stones and pebbles and as i say look purple and blue just around that grassy area can you see the shadows it's, it, it looks like where the the shadows of the grass the long grass is cascading and what that does is it makes it look more 3d so look now that sky is totally dry all i'm doing is taking some pure white and i'm just going around my clouds a little bit i'm just giving them a little bit more detail just drawing some whispers on them and i'm just going over the top of them just on certain edges just to make them look more prominent and when you're happy if you just take your time and just draw in some branches so look again if you want to pause the video now before we go on we're just going to take a really thin brush and we're going to do branches over the top of chalk now i like to use the chalk first because then i can just draw in the branches afterwards but it's totally up to you you don't have to create branches with chalk first the reason i do that is i find branches a bit tricky look i've made a mistake but thank god my background was lovely and dry so that's why i always insist on drying a section of your work before you progress because if you make a mistake like i constantly do as you can see you can just correct it with a baby wipe look you can just rub it out and look because that background is lovely and dry it doesn't make my my sky a horrible browny bluey color so for the tree branches look i'm losing a really really thin brush it's incredibly thin and I've all I've done is got hardly any paint on that brush and it because if I put loads and loads of paint on my brush I get a big blob of it and what you want to do again just like I'm teaching you with the um, perspective with the tones think of all branches get thinner as they get longer so the end of a branch is always thinner than the, the the beginning of a branch same with a tree trunk it always gets thicker as it gets towards the bottom so a good rule of thumb is to if you want to use chalk and if you get nervous like my hand always goes in my paint it always smudges so what you can do is you can paint on a few branches use your hair dryer and then it's nice and dry and then if you make a mistake with one of your branches because you get too much pain or you just don't like it you can just literally use a baby wipe and just correct it so as i keep saying to you taking your time when you're happy with a section use a hair dryer and dry it 
And then what that does, it's like an insurance policy. It means if you make a mistake with something like the branches where you've got a very dark tone, so we've got blue and brown here to make a very dark, sort of almost black looking color. Well, what that does is if it wasn't dry, I would smudge that into my lovely blue sky, which is really a big no-no. So as I say, don't be afraid to use a hairdryer in the stages of your work. It's like a little insurance policy. So while you're doing things like these thin branches, you, you've got the safety of knowing if you smear it with your hand or anything, it's not gonna be a problem. So use a thin brush, put a little bit of water on your brush so it glides really easy. It's not gonna dry and sort of scrape along the canvas and just a little bit of paint. And that's how you get such thin, nice branches. And as I say, just keep working on it. Think of it like the shadows. The branches are gonna be what's underneath. And because they have, um, we're gonna leave bits of the background shining through and cause they are just like the shadows where it's underneath. It gives the illusion again of more depth. So always think of it like this, always go to the back of something and then paint on top of it. So always do the background or the, the furthest back and then work your way forward towards the viewer. So the same with a tree, always do the branches first and then we're gonna put the leaves on top and it's so much easier. So when you're happy with it, think of it like veins of your body. We want it coming out and being really, really thin, and nice and kind of symmetrical, so it just looks like nice branches. There we go. Really, really easy. A few little ones coming off it really really thin strokes and I'm going to use the same tone I'm just going to darken up around that tree just where that hedge is and all I'm doing again I'm just leaving some of the underpaint to shine through and again it just adds texture to it and again just around the tree onto our path and all it is is that same colour we used on the hedges before it's just purple, brown, blue, and green, and a tiny bit of black. That's why I always use those combinations of those colors to make a shadow tone. And again, in the foreground, because this is the closest to the viewer, this is gonna be the darkest area. And same here on our path. And all we're doing, we're just trying to create clear divides of things so you can clearly see where things are. So where grass ends and where the path begins. We're just trying to create divides. Now I'm using this a fan brush. They are awesome for things like texture. So just by using a fan brush, they are exactly what it says on the tin. They look like a fan. And by just loading up some bright green and yellow, all I'm doing is just going over the top, just creating more and more texture. So that's all painting is. is just think of it like building a house. You start with the foundations and you put brick by brick glass and door handles till you're very very happy with it and that's the same with painting you always start with things like the base the shadows and you just work your way on top trying to create texture until you're happy with it so just by adding a little bit of blue to that mix i'm doing the exact same thing but i'm going around where it's a bit more shadowy so these parts of areas they're not in the dark but they're a bit darker they're not getting as much light so again just by adding blue or a little bit of purple to any color will create more of a cool tone. So again, just going around it, creating more cools, same, just adding more texture, just building it up, building layers. And again, just use that dark tone that we keep using to just emphasize where things are, edges of bits. Just makes it look more prominent, makes it look more realistic really easy stuff it's not hard just taking your time just adding more texture sometimes you can overwork it like this painting towards the end I think I overworked it um, my camera was playing up a bit and anyone who knows who's watched my previous video when you're in and out of the zone it's not a good thing because the zone or autopilot when you can just do things and be your 
creative best sense. If you watch my video on um, getting in the zone and how to do that as an artist, it's when you can do your best work because you have such a relaxed environment. And because my camera was playing up, unfortunately, in this video, um, it was distracting me a bit. So I think I overworked this paint a little bit too much. Now, all I'm doing, look, I'm just I'm using that shadow tone just to create texture. So that's all it is. Just using that shadow tone to create a hedge, to create texture. Just try to create clear divides where you have things, just so your eye can see it. So dry it when you're happy with it, with a hair dryer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the highlights on the top. So just like what we did with the tree, the reason we want that canvas dry is because look, we're using a really lovely bright yellow. And if that wasn't dry, it's going to smudge and you won't get a nice bright yellow. You'll get a blacky, greeny yellow. And we don't want that. So again, just take your time, use a really thin brush and just create dots. And all these dots are going to be just little flower heads. So just take your time. Obviously, I've speeded this video up for you guys because obviously this painting took about, I don't know, just over an hour. But by speeding it up, you can just see how easy it is to do. Just add dots, look. And then all I've done, do you remember the color we used for the path, which was just lots and lots and lots of white, a tiny bit of yellow and a bit of um, brown. And I'm just doing the same over this side. So these sort of daisy flowers over here weren't so yellow. It must be a different type of crop, I guess. So all I'm doing, look, same as we did the yellow. And again, that's why we want that canvas nice and dry. So it's very intense and very bright. Now, where we have a shadow, you can create that illusion by just doing what we did with the grass. So adding a bit of blue to the mix. So a bit of blue and a bit of purple will just create the same mix so if you have your really really bright areas and then you just have a little bit of blue and purple to that same mix you can create where the shadow is so just like I was saying to you earlier to make something look cool so around the tree and obviously in that shadow area just add some blue and purple to your mix and what it does look it just creates the illusion that it's in the shade super easy guys now, again, I'm just going to add some highlights. I think I got a bit too carried away here and I did too much highlights. But all it is is some green, some yellow and some white. And again, that's just going to emphasize where things are hitting the sunlight away from that shadow. And same for the grass tops. So again, just leave some of the underpainting and it just creates texture. So where the light is hitting these areas, it's just giving it more texture. Same on the path. Just add some flower heads. And you can work this, as I said previously in all these videos, these are very, very quick tutorials. When I'm actually doing a proper painting, I will literally do this for hours till everything is right. If you watch some of the guys on here on YouTube that are fantastic, they literally work for hours. But obviously with these tutorials, they're just for beginners and intermediates. We just want to show you how to do things first before we actually do some of our, our videos. I don't tend to film my big work for the reason, as I keep saying to you, of the flow state. I tend to do my best work when I'm not distracted and I find when I'm videoing these tutorials and things, I do get distracted. So. Right, now to fill in the leaves, all I've done is I've taken some green, some blue and some brown and some purple and I've created a shadowy tone and all I've done is I've used a big brush that is actually dry and this brush is dried out that it's become hard so think of like stale bread where it's like rock hard and because of that I use it for trees I always use the same brush for trees now you can use a sponge anyone who's got a bath sponge which really texturize and you can just create the illusion of leaves so by using something that has an impression it gives a great look of leaves just by texture so this brush is rock hard the bristles are rock hard so as I say it's almost like a stale piece of bread and all I'm doing is pushing down on the canvas with very little paint and that is giving the illusion of branches so if you have an old brush 
that you can just leave out in the sun when it's dry and just use that for leaves. You could have your leaf brush kind of thing. That's what I do. So once you're happy with your tree, you can just put the highlights on top. So just use, just dry your work and just do the same technique as what we did before. You put the shadows on first and then you put the highlights on top. So all I'm doing is just adding some green and yellow and then some green and white. And all I'm doing is just making some lovely definitions. And by leaving areas that with a shadow tone underneath it, adding highlights on one side and darkness on the other side again i'm just trying to create the illusion of depth and texture in all my tree so just add a little bit of yellow and green together and they are the warm areas so they're the bits adding um, that are hitting the sunlight you can even add a little bit of white to that mix and they can be more prominent to have really really highlights and if you want to darken up areas again all you do is just add some blue and a little bit of purple and that can be the areas that are in the sun and just keep working on it till you're happy with the texture so the real real highlights just add a little bit of green white and yellow together and the real shadow areas just add some blue and purple Now all I've got here is a little bit of blue and purple and a tiny bit of brown and white and I'm just creating the illusion of bark and definition on my tree. So I've got one edge of it very dark and one edge a bit lighter and what that's again doing is just creating a little 3D effect. And I'm just going around the branches doing the same thing, it's just to create a 3D effect and again on my path just so it looks like the um, shadows of the long grass. So just keep working it till you're happy with it. There's no right or wrong. I've just darkened up one side of my um, tree. You don't have to just with a bit of blue and purple just to make it look a bit more, um, a bit more contrast between the light and the dark. And again, just keep working it. Keep doing flower tops. Keep adding highlights. Just jet white for highlights now. Just adding where the where the um, light is hitting the trees and even I'm using a bit of the sky color and I'm just putting in some gaps in my um, tree in between the leaves just to make it look a little bit more realistic just by adding some gaps and again trying to get these clear definitions between things like the fields and the flower tops and the hedges just reworking areas till you're happy with it so look just adding that sky color just to create gaps just make it look a bit more realistic and the same here just adding a little bit more blue and purple to these lovely hedges just to make them look more realistic and i think we're pretty much finished i think that looks fantastic so there we go a really really easy painting let's get a fantastic photo of it this looks absolutely great and again it just teaches you about perspective so using blues and purples for calls and pushing things back and using darker tones in the foreground will bring things forward so i hope you've enjoyed it i have plenty more painting tutorials on my channel please make sure you have liked and subscribed if you haven't already and yeah another fantastic painting tutorial i hope you've all enjoyed it take care everyone bye